Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to change the font size of your fields using VBA. Now, I'm not talking about just clicking on those little buttons when you design your form to make your font go bigger and smaller. Everybody knows how to do that. I'm talking about when you're using the database, if you want the font to get larger or smaller on the fly, your user can click a little button and make the text bigger if they can't see it, or they can make it smaller if they want to see more on the screen. All right, before we get started, yes, this example is going to require a little bit of VBA, so you can dynamically resize the font up and down with a couple of buttons. If you've never done any VBA programming before, don't worry, don't panic, it's easy. Go watch this video, it's free, it's on my website, it's on my YouTube channel, it's about 20 minutes long, and it teaches you all the basics, everything you need to know to get started programming with Visual Basic. Okay, so when I travel... I've got a small travel laptop that I like to carry with me. It's it's small. I can use it on the plane. It fits in my carry-on. It's nice and, you know, it's, it's a good size for work, but it's not like as big as my desktop. So my access database on my desktop in my office, you know, the screens are really big. I can fit lots of stuff on there. I can use a smaller font, right, because I can read it. But when I log on remotely, I like to use Chrome Remote Desktop. If you don't know what Chrome Remote Desktop is, I cover it in my new PC setup video. It's a really easy way to use a web browser to connect to your computer back at the office. Anyhow, when I log on remotely, the font is really tiny because the resolution on my laptop is much, much smaller. So it would be nice if I could just blow up the font on the few things that I want to see. Maybe some buttons, right? Make these fonts a little bit bigger, all right? Usually for me, it's the note uh, fields. That I like to make bigger. But you can do this with any field that you want, provided, of course, you don't make the font too big that you can't see it in the, in the text box. Can you make the text boxes themselves bigger? Yeah, you can. That's going to be a separate video. In fact, in the extended cut for my auto resize video, I show you how to make a little button where you can click on it. It'll make your form bigger. Like you can slide out a little you know, extra piece of it here. And a lot of people have asked me to make a video on how I can just resize a form and it resizes all the controls and makes everything bigger. I'm going to put a video together on that in the future. I haven't yet. I haven't decided if it's going to be a tech help video or a developer level video because it does involve quite a lot of code. But for today, what I'm going to show you is just how to make the font a little bit bigger on demand with a little, little couple buttons here. So if you're using your travel laptop, you can click the buttons. It makes the font bigger, easier to read. If you're back on your, you know, your desktop, you just click the down button, whatever you want to do. All right. So. Go into Design View. I don't need you that big. Slide that over there. All right. I'm just going to, for the sake of this video, get rid of these fields here and make the notes feel bigger. Just like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to need a button to go bigger and a button to go smaller. So I'm just going to copy one of these buttons. Copy, paste, Control-C, Control-V. We'll make this the plus button. And we'll make it smaller like that. And then we'll copy and paste you. And we'll make this the minus button. All right, that's just the captions. Let's give them good names. Let me slide this over a little bit. I don't like Command 30, so you're going to be the uh, Font Up button. And you'll be the Font Down button. Okay. All right, save it. So let's work on the font. Let's work on just the Notes field for now. All right, so right-click, Build Event. I'm now in the code for the Font Up button. All right, we're going to say notes.fontsize, and here's all the different stuff you can change, by the way. Font color, right, font weight, that's bold, okay, there's another font bold up there too. Font italics, there's a whole bunch of different stuff. We want font size right now. Notes.fontsize equals, let's just make it bigger, notes.fontsize, come on, I can't type today, plus one. All right, that's it, one line of code. Save it. While we're at it, right click build event we'll just copy this guy right copy and paste and there you go and we'll go minus one for this one save it come back out here ready here we go ding 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 see make it as big as you want within reason there are limits like you don't want to go too small so you'll generate an error let's see how, how small i can go and oh it's going it's going up oh, there you go it's got to be one to 127 Okay, let's program that in, 
All right, let's go back to our code. We'll say right here, if notes.fontsize is less than, let's say reasonably, let's go five point, then exit sub. Okay, I mean, come on, if we want a four point, come on, who's gonna see that? We'll do the same thing for the increase. If it's greater than, let's say a hundred point, then exit sub. So you can't get too big, too small. Okay, all right, let's try it again. Plus, 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 plus. Let's go try to go down again. Down, 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 down. And it kind of stops there. That's even too small. <laughs> Want to throw a couple extra fields in it? Let's do first name and last name. We'll go the same thing here. Let's go back to the code window. And you can do the same thing right here. First name dot font size equals. I will just copy that, right? Copy, paste, minus one. And then we'll just copy all that and go plus one. And you shouldn't need to put different constraints on it unless you got these starting up. I usually would say put this up somewhere around seven, right? That way, you know, if these are a few point sizes less, it's not going to be a problem. You won't get lower than one. And then we'll do the same thing with last name. Copy and paste. And we'll just change this to last name. And you can do whatever field you want. Members, you can use the technique I showed you. I believe it was the progress bar video. Uh, you can cycle through all the fields on here if you want to. What I would do is I'd put something in the tag property. Anyways, let me let me get to that in a second. Let's plus, plus, plus. See so yeah, how they get just a little bit bigger. You got to make sure you don't get too big. Otherwise, you don't fit in the text box anymore. You could turn the margins off inside here. There's a margin property. All right. If you want this to fill the whole box. Right, anytime you anytime you get bigger, you get to just reduce that margin to zero. Okay, but you can see how it makes it just a li just that little bit sometimes is enough to make it easier to see. Right, members, this is the video I was talking about. Progress bar two. I show you how to loop through all the controls in a form, and you can assign something in the tag property, like you can put an X in there or a yes or whatever, and you can use that to determine if you want to make that font size get bigger or smaller as you loop through those. Um, those those fields there i shrunk down the form just a little bit i just put these two fields on it with the customer id and the notes field just so i could demonstrate how it, you can see the big difference there see you can make it nice and small oh someone's beaming in you can make it nice and small so you can see lots of stuff in here sometimes like on my big screen i like to see lots of text if someone sent me a long email because i get all my email into my access database too i cover that in my email seminar but anyways um I like to sometimes see a lot on the screen if I'm sitting up close. I've got my, you know, got my glasses on, got my big screen. But if I'm on the laptop, I want to be able to do this and blow it up, right? And then I can, you know, click here and scroll down if I have to. Okay, so there you go. Um, yeah. So there is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links.
You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.